GitHub Copilot, the AI code completion tool from GitHub that may or may not be here to take our jobs. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive, where it's my job to help you level up your DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. If that sounds interesting to you, subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Last week on June 29th, GitHub announced a new product called Copilot, in which they describe as an AI pair programmer that helps you write better code. I've heard a few people express concern, with varying degrees of seriousness, that this technology will displace human developers. However, in order to take our jobs, Copilot would first need to pass the dreaded technical interview process. Today, I'm going to put Copilot up against a variety of interview questions from Leak Code and see how it fares. At the end, we'll evaluate how it did and decide whether or not we need to start upskilling into a different career path. Without further ado, let's get into it. I've got VS Code up here on the left with Copilot installed, and then I also have the Leak Code problems on the right. Let me just sort by difficulty or filter on difficulty so we can get an easy problem to start. And let's get one that I haven't done yet. And let's try square root of x. OK, given a non-negative integer, compute and return the square root of x. Uh, I feel like in Python, this is going to be pretty trivial. OK, you're not allowed to use any built-in exponent functions. So we'll see how Copilot handles that constraint, whether or not it realizes it. I'm going to give it all of this context uh, as the problem statement so that it can access that. And then let's copy in the example and see what it comes back with. OK, so it looks like it did not cheat and use the, the built-ins. Let's accept that solution. OK, let's see what they're actually doing. If you start at 0, you just return it. Otherwise, we initialize a left and a right pointer. Left is 1, right is equal to our value that we're taking the square root of. And then while left is smaller than right, we take an integer midpoint and walk our way into the middle. If we eventually reach a point where the mid squared equals the value, that is our square root. Uh, otherwise, if the square of the mid is too small, then we set the left at that mid plus 1. Otherwise, we take our right value and move it down by 1. And so then once we, if our right ever crosses our left, then we know that the left value minus 1 will give us that square root. So let's plug that in and see if it works. Run code. Works. Submit. All right. 86% faster than most other solutions. And works. works on the first shot. Let's up the difficulty and go for a medium problem. Back to problems. Difficulty, medium, status, to do. <sighs> Let's go for, I don't know, permutations. Given an array nums of distinct integers, return all possible permutations. You can return in any order. Okay, so I'll copy the problem statement and the examples, comment those out. And we'll give it the function signature. OK, this is interesting. I've seen it do this before, where the solution that it's providing actually uses a method that you haven't defined yet. So let's, let's give it that, and then let's define that method as well. Def, uh, DFS. And the fact that it's saying DFS is probably hinting that it's a depth first search. Uh, we're going to take in the signature that it provides is a little different. So it's going to be self nums path result. So I don't know why it would call it path there, but let's see. So if nums is empty, we append whatever we got in path. Otherwise, for i in the range of the length of nums, 
uh, we're going to call this function recursively and pass it a slice of the array up to i and then after i all right let's copy it in run code looks like it works on the first example success all right two for two let's ratchet it up with a hard problem back to problems Uh, filter on hard, status to do, uh, edit distance, should be a fun one. I feel like I've gotten an edit distance problem in multiple interview processes. So given two strings, word one and word two, return the minimum number of operations required to convert them to, each other, to the other. You have insert character, delete character, replace character. Give it the context. So for example, to get from horse to rose, we need to replace H with R, then remove R, then remove E. Okay, that makes sense. Let's copy in the signature. Let's see what we get. Uh, so we get the two lengths of the words and then DP, uh, it's probably using uh, dynamic programming approach, we essentially generate a grid of zeros. So zeros by zeros with the two lengths. So we loop through for i in range of n plus 1. And for the ith row, we set it equal to i. And then we do the same for j set that equal to j, and then we loop through both words. And if we have a match, basically, if, if there's a match between the previous character in both words, then we can change our cell to match that of the upstream cell. Otherwise, we take this minimum statement Let's accept it and see if it works. All right, run code. Seems to have gotten the test case. Submit. Boom, success. All right, I'm not actually even sure what's going on here. Uh, it seems to be using dynamic programming. It, it initializes this array. It uses some condition to decide how to increment it, but it's quite a complex condition and it magically seems to have worked on the first try. So that is pretty darn impressive. As you just saw, I was very impressed with how well Copilot handled these questions, especially given that there were some non-trivial constraints in the problem statements that it managed to pick up on. I tested a few more problems off camera and would say that about 80% of the time, solution was correct immediately. 10% it was close but needed some nudging. And then the final 10% it was way off and didn't quite seem to understand the problem statement. Overall, this is pretty incredible. So, should we all start packing up our offices and call it a day? I don't think so. In my experience writing software, it's actually quite rare to have problems that are as well-defined and self-contained as you would find in an interview question like those we saw today. A significant portion of the job as an engineer is actually exploring the problem space and defining those constraints. Because of this, I think that our jobs are safe, for now. Thanks for watching to the end. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to continue down the DevOps rabbit hole, try checking out one of my other videos over there. That's it for today. Remember, just keep building.